Good evening, Jerusalem. I'm next to my beautiful church, Church of the Holy Sepulchre. Um, it's an hour before they're going to close it. And I decided to arrive. No, because of so many reasons. The first one, it's like two holidays today. We are celebrating uh, a birthday for the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. Then a birthday Church of the Holy Sepulchre. And um, it's been open to the public only at 335 AD, 4th century, which is amazing that we are looking at one of the most ancient church in the world. Secondly, it's a very important, uh, another very important day, and it's not less than the Feast of the Cross, because the true cross was found today. I must say that, not today, today, many, many years ago, but today. Then we are celebrating two important dates. The Church of the Holy Sepulchre, Nativity, birthday, and, and, and we are talking about one of the most ancient churches in the world. And another important feast that happened in uh, 326, when they found the tomb and the true cross. And we're going to talk about it soon. But you can see the facade of the church uh, from, let's say, the end of the 11th century, the beginning of the 12th century, and because that church was burned down or been destroyed so many times. We are celebrating today another important event, and this is the cross of Carol. Where are you, Carol? Here it is. Um, Carol asked me to... Um, by her that cross, I will bless it in the Church of the Holy Sepulchre and I will send it to her. You can do that too if you want, it's not difficult. Go to the description beneath the, uh, the, um, beneath the video and you will be able to find a link. It's called Buy Me a Coffee. If you go to Buy Me a Coffee, you will see how you can enjoy that cross or different other crosses that can be blessed in different places in Jerusalem. And the most important thing, I think for me, it's the Holy Bible with a cover of olive wood. I decided to do that today because it's quite crowded lately. And uh, this is beautiful because um, uh, you saw lots of my videos at the morning time, but now it's actually an hour before they are closing the church. You see that the doors are closed now or they are trying to close the door but so many people are trying to enter into the church and that's because the, the Catholic has got a procession now but they will open it soon and um, and before we will enter let me talk a little bit about uh, What's happening here? Then before we will talk about their church, let me tell you that there are two options. There are two tombs of Jesus in Jerusalem. One is the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. The other one is the Garden Tomb, which is outside the Damascus Gate. I'm not going to argue if that is the real side or not the real side, because I can convince you that both sides can be the real side and not the real side. I prefer that you will enter to the both places, the garden tomb and the church of the Holy Sepulchre, and you will choose by yourself or follow your churches. Both of those places are amazing and both of those places are telling us the same story. He was crucified in Jerusalem at a place that called the Golgotha. He, was, he died on the cross. He was, they purified his body, they buried him, and he resurrected. And that's the most important thing. Then the Greek Orthodox, for example, are calling their church the Church of the Resurrection. Now, Carol didn't want me to talk a lot about you, but I can mention things that you didn't 
uh, right because I felt it. You are such a great woman. You are thinking about others more than you are thinking about yourself. And this is beautiful. Later on, as you already know, Carol, I will read things that you actually asked me to read, but that's going to be privately. And um, in those um, prayers, I know that you are thinking about the good of the word, about believing in God, trusting God, about so many other things. Then around that video, what I want you to do is to think, uh, my, my Carol, to think about what you wished and to pray through all over the video. The rest of you, because she's so amazing, you can actually say uh, thank you, Carol. And because of it, uh, we are uh, in. Uh, we are doing that video. Then, in that case, we cannot enter now. And you can see the priest that outside usually is that uh, is a Franciscan one, and he doesn't like us. And we, all oh, right, not us, me, to enter there because I'm talking a lot. And I will we'll do that here. Um, if you want to see the church, you can skip another five minutes. But I think to understand the church. It's better to listen to me. Then, in that matter, at 70 AD, that city had been destroyed. That part was outside the gates of Jerusalem. Jesus was crucified outside the gate. Then, in that case, uh, it used to be a quarry at the time of King Herod. And after the destruction of the, tem uh, the, the temple, people used it as, um, as a kind of a burial site. Next to it, there was a garden of a rich man, Joseph of Ramitia, who gave later on Jesus his own tomb. And in that case, that's why the tomb of Jesus is next to the uh, crucifixion place. If you don't believe me, go to John, I think John 19, and you will be able uh, to read about it. At 135, Adrian came to here and destroyed Jerusalem again. But this time, he changed the name of Jerusalem to Alia Capitolina, and he covered the tomb of Jesus and built on top of it a Roman temple. That Roman temple was dedicated to Jupiter or to Venice or both of them. And in that case, until the 4th century, that was a church. Sorry, that was a temple. It wasn't a church. But we do have a problem now, because the tomb is missing. You cannot visit the tomb. And you couldn't say that you are a Christian, because if you say that you are a Christian, the, um, the thing that might happen to you is not so good. The Romans could kill you for that. Oh, they just opened the door, then in that case the Franciscans just left the stone of the anointing, the anointing stone, but we will uh, reach the place soon then don't worry just want you to understand the meaning of it i want you to understand one of the issues that all, everyone asks me how do you know that this is the real site the same question you can ask about the twin towers if you will bring your child that never i mean that just was born born after 9 11 uh, to the grand zero and he will ask you the same question at that time the first Christians took their children and said, Jesus was crucified here, he was buried there, but they couldn't pray there and they couldn't worship that place. Something happened in the 4th, 4th century. At 312, Constantine, Emperor Constantine, saw a cross in the sky and he realized that from right now, Christianity will be a legal religion, and more than that, the Roman emperor will become a Christian emperor. Then in that case, he sent his mother a few years later to visit uh, Jerusalem, to walk uh, through the footsteps of Jesus. Then she followed traditions. Yes, you can say that, uh, its traditions. But as I believe, she knew exactly where to go. 
together with the bishop of Jerusalem and of Caesarea, they started to look for the evidence of Jesus in that place. That in that case, they destroyed the Roman temple and started to look for evidence. And they found the tomb. They found the Golgotha. And they built one of the first churches. It was a huge church. It was a beautiful church. What you're going to see today, it's only half of it, even less than half of it. The, the, if you watch my videos about Jerusalem, you know that the entrance was far away from the, I mean, the, that side. And this is only the entrance from the Crusader time. Because after the 4th century, at the 6th century, that church has um, been destroyed a few times. We um, actually can think about um, 614, for example. Kuzuro II, the Persian uh, emperor, came here, destroyed the church, and stole the true cross. The true cross that we are going to find together with uh, St. Helen. No, no. 630, Emperor Reckless brought back the true cross. But the true cross that, uh, that Queen Helen found was divided already to three pieces. One to Rome, second part to Constantinople, um, and the third one is, was in that church. What was on top of the Golgotha was a very expensive um, cross made of gold and, and if I'm not wrong, uh, good stones as well. Then that cross was brought back to here. Until today, in that day, early morning, I already uploaded a video of it, the Catholic can show you, or early showed you, uh, a piece from the true cross. The Greek Orthodox, in one next to Adam Chapel, can show you another piece of it. And those and few other pieces are, um, oh, it's actually, I, I'm, I'm not supposed to use the word uh, pieces, relics. Uh, you can find in some other places through all over the world. Then in that case, um, that church being destroyed by the earthquakes, and this is the time, and I'm sure that Carol, you will agree with me. This is the time to say, or to say the pray to the people of Morocco that lost a few thousand people in a horrible earthquake. And let's add to it the people of Lib Libya that until now lost 5,000 people because of a storm. And some people say that soon that uh, number will rise to 20,000 people. This is, this is so horrible. This is so horrible. Then in that case, at 10, 99, no, 1009, 11th century, beginning of the 11th century, it been destroyed by Al-Hakim, uh, um, the Muslim, uh, um, Sultan that conquered Jerusalem and destroyed the city and that that, they, that church been destroyed a few times if you will enter and we will enter to the church soon you will see that it's actually divided into so many different chapels it doesn't look like a, a regular church uh, with a nave corridors with the apps and uh, I'm sure that if you watch it, uh, my videos before, you will be able to understand it better. Then in that case, let's enter to the church, but not before I, must, uh, I will tell you that they are renovating the floor of the church. That church belonged to so many uh, denominations, uh, Christian denominations, for example, Greek Orthodox, Orthodox, um, Catholic, um, Armenian, you can find our, uh, the Church of Syria, the Ceramic Church, Church of Egypt, the Coptic uh, Church. Then in that case, 
and suddenly they have a lot of tension between themselves. For example, look at the second floor, you can see two, um, two windows. Let me... And there's a ladder, one of them. The story tells us that the Armenian who owns those two chapels wanted to clean the window from the outside. Then they took the ladder outside and started to clean it. The Greek Orthodox came to them and said, who told you that a ladder is yours? I mean, the facade is yours. And until they figure out who owns the facade, the ladder will be there. It's part of the status quo that was written at the time of the British. The Br British were here as well. Everyone actually occupied uh, Jerusalem and wanted to uh, control the world. The British were one of them. Then in that case, there is a tension between the uh, domination and this is my wish. Let's accept that people believe in Jesus in different ways. Let's accept that everyone who believes in Jesus is a Christian. It doesn't matter which domination he is on. Then yes, there are differences, but the idea is the same. I believe that if everyone will agree, we will have less war in the world and, and actually just better life than Carol. And the rest, let's enter the city, the church. It's September 2023. The church is already busy. Until two, three weeks ago, it was totally empty. I reached the church two hours ago because I had to stand in the line to bless your uh, cross in two places. One is inside the church of the, uh, the tomb of Jesus. The second one is at the crucifixion place. Why I'm not doing it now? Mainly because I cannot take a video of it inside the church. To your right side, you can see the, uh, the Golgotha, the crucifixion place. You can still hear the organ of the, um, of, uh, the Catholic. In front of you, you can see the anointing stone. That's where they anointed the body of Jesus. Then let me show you before we're going to climb up what is actually happening here. And in the background, you can hear the organ. Jesus was crucified outside the city. You can see, you can see it right here. Now the word Golgotha appears only in the Bible. You cannot find it in any other source than Golgotha in Hebrew and Aramaic, it is called. Then maybe because it was a crucifixion area, um, you could see a lot of bones and skulls. Or maybe just like the garden tomb, the shape of the, of the hill looks like a skull. And if you watch my videos of the garden tomb, then you will be able to see it. It's fantastic to see it. Another important thing that you must know is that crucifixion was only for people who were against the uh, regime, and, Je and Jesus was against the regime. Above his tomb, you will be able to see his sin list. Jesus from Nazareth, the king of the Jews. The Romans already crowned someone else as the king. Guess what? Family of King Herod. You are right. Who are those people? And let's start with the most important figures. The mom, who is now holding uh, the body of Jesus, Mary. Next to it, the one who is kissing the hand or hugging the head. The hand of Jesus is John the disciple. He will always be without a beard. To the right and to the left, you can see the women of Jerusalem. I believe that one who holds the other hand of Jesus is Mary Magdalene. And two more people that appears only here are Nagdiminos with the green clothes and the one with the beard, the white beard is um, 
Joseph over Mithia, that his garden was near the crucifixion. He was part of the Sanhedrin in the government of the Jews, but he believed in a secret way uh, with Jesus because he was afraid to talk about it because he knew what will happen to him if he will say, I believe in Jesus. And as a Jew, after he died, he was supposed to be buried at the same day. Then he died around three o'clock and the day according to the Jews ends at sunset time. Let's say about an hour from now. This is, uh, it's now around six o'clock, 6 p.m. I think so. Then <laughs> can be five, no six, more close to six. Then in that case, they must bury him before that. Joseph of Ramitia asked uh, Pontus Pilate, and now we can see the connection between two, those two people. He was an important people. I'm talking about Joseph of Ramitia. And he got the body of Jesus. According to the Jewish law, they must purify the body of his. And here you can see Joseph of Ramitia and Nabdibinos. John is kissing his hand. The mother is right here. And Mary is holding the hair of her, you know that Mary, that she's one of the only few figures that you could see the hair of them. And the other women, the other women, where are the men? Except of John, the 12th, weren't here. The stone behind you is where they anointed the body of Jesus. And this is for me the most dramatic, energetic part of the tour, because the body of Jesus touched it. As you can see, a lot of the people who buy some souvenirs. Ah, the smell is amazing. Everyone who bless, uh, bless it there knows that it's not a present, it's not a cross, I mean it is a cross, but it's a relic. This is the closest place that you can actually be with Jesus. Now I know that every church is house of God, but this is the most important site than in that case. The pure for the body of Jesus, they put a shroud around him and they bury him in the tomb. Look at the cave. Remember that cave. But first, let's climb up to the Golgotha. The Golgotha belongs to two, to the Catholic, we are entering through the Catholic part, and through, and we will leave the Golgotha from the Greek Orthodox part. The ladder here is for, uh, for the end of the day, when they will close the door, two Muslims families will close the door. Two Muslims families are on the keys of the church. Can you, can you understand it? It's a church. Why? Historically, because at the Muslim time they controlled that place and they decided who to let in or not, and he had to pay a lot of money. But um, from the Ottoman time and later on the British time, uh, the key was supposed to be owned by the, by the church itself. Which one? Catholic, Greek Orthodox, um, Armenian, then they decided not to decide and they gave the keys to the, um, the two Muslim families that until today are doing it. To avoid problems. By climbing up the Golgotha, huh? what we can see from here. First of all, you can see the church or the area of the tomb that we are going to visit it. But you can see that they are renovating the floor. Uh, 
And every video that I'm taking of the church is, in a way, kind of historical video. Excuse me, please. Thank you. We just enter to the Catholic place. That side belongs to the Greek Orthodox. In the Catholic Church, you can see a few, a few things. In front of you is where they nail him to the cross. One of the stations of the Via Dolorosa. Secondly, just beneath that video, there's a chapel. I don't know what he is doing, but he is not supposed to take that. Maybe something fell. Yeah, I think something fell there. But if you will take that cabin from here, uh, you will um, you will find a door, and that door was open until the uh, until the Salhadin came. And when he came to here, he uh, didn't let the Christians to enter through all the doors. He kept only one door, the one that we enter. Then, in a way, from the chapel, that's where the strip in front is closed, you can go down to the facade of the church, and if uh, it won't be too late, I will show it to you. And that's where they nailed him to the cross. And this is the reason I was here before, because to enter there, yes, I can, that I can show you. Let me do that for you, excuse me, please. That is a uh, part of the red color. Red color, it's the color of the fist of the uh, cross. And there was a ceremony in the morning. I'm sure that some of you could see me or watch my video. Oh. All right. And you can see something historically because usually it's not supposed to be, but you can see that it's a door, it's not a window. Let me find this telephone. This is, this is great. Let's move to the Greek Orthodox part. The Greek Orthodox part, you can see um, another Catholic station of the cross, and that is where statue of Mary with a spear in her heart. What is the story? This symbolized the Pietà. When Mary came together with Jesus for the first time to the temple, that was actually happened before they flee to Egypt. And this is the presentation at the temple. Presentation at the temple is a Jewish uh, event until today. If you do have the first born son, you must go and donate something. Now, there's no Jewish temple. And the most important thing to donate will be um, more food and uh, wine to the to one of the synagogues. But she, I mean, the Holy Family entered to the temple. Mary was the happiest mother ever. But Saint Simon, a Jewish priest, told her, "Mary, your son will die in front of your eyes." will be like a spear entering to your eyes. Then in that matter, from that moment, she never smiled. And I can understand, Mary, I do have only one child. For me, it's a nightmare. If something could happen to my child before me, I don't know what will happen to me. Then you can understand the sorrow, you can understand the problem. Um, what we can see here, this is where they crucified Jesus. 
This is the crucifixion place. This is the most important part on top of the Golgotha, the Calvary. And I'm just waiting for someone to leave that place. Now I'll be able. Oh, now I can. All right. First of all, you can see the crucifixion place, the exact spot. And that's why I was here two hours ago to be at the table. Uh, to stand in line to be at the table and to bless it for you, Carol. And I will bless every cross of yours. But you can see the Golgotha, the top of it, beneath the glass. The glass is to avoid people like me to take some souvenirs. And see that guy is now he's supposed to put his hand in the hole to touch the Golgotha, but he's not doing it because the tour guide didn't explain what to do or because he's got no tour guide. And in a way, he missed most of the idea. Without putting your hand in here, there's no reason. Oh, she's doing it. To, um, to the right of Jesus, you can see John the disciple. Remember, the only one who's got no has actually left here uh, from the disciples. And Mary is at the other side, and it's difficult to see the uh, Jesus from here. Now we can actually see it, but before that, let me take a picture of it. I have a million pictures of it, but you can see above Jesus is sinless. Jesus from Nazareth, King of the Jews. It's like two different languages. This is a Greek Orthodox language. And you can see what's happened here from uh, of, of, um, from the uh, last week of Jesus, from entering into the city. And the Catholic part, you, oops, sorry, you can see uh, everything from the creation of the world from Adam and Eve. Adam. Zachariah, David, until the crucifixion. And actually, what is important to see or to know that there is kind of a, a there is an ancient mosaic wall, because every part of the mosaic that you see here, except of that, and you can see here me, Isaac, Abraham, um, is Every part is from 1808 and up, because that church was burned down in that time. And that part of the ascension, it's actually not even a story that happened here. That part is um, from the Crusader part. Oops, wait a minute. It's difficult for me to hold the cross. Sorry, and beautiful uh, part of it. As you remember, we're going to leave the Golgotha from the Greek Orthodox part, but just let's say <sighs> goodbye to Jesus. If you want to light a candle, you can, and I'm doing it from time to time. I've been asked by someone to do that, and I did it. Then let's continue all the way down to the tomb and uh, two rail handles please use it it's very steep every time that I'm here it's different because of the renovation Before we will reach the tomb, we can see that they are marking the, every place of the church, and by that, soon we're going to have a beautiful, 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 beautiful um, uh, documentation about how it was built today and before. And before we will talk about the tomb, this is an Armenian chapel. According to the Armenian, that is the place that they looked, the women looked at the crucifixion right here. 
and you know that I like to light candles here as well. There are three options. You can add a candle here. Those two are always exist. The line for the tomb is goes like that. But we are skipping it because I've already been there. And let's go to stand uh, in front of it. And uh, we will talk about it. Oops. Okay. Thank you. Now, this is the tomb of Jesus. To the left of it, they are still excavating uh, um, beneath the floor, and I'm sure that one day they will publish it. And I hope that one day they will publish it. Remember the line, and goes all the way. And until two weeks ago, it was quite empty. Not anymore that the structure is new structure is new carol mainly because it's been destroyed so many times if someone didn't like the tomb the best thing to do is to destroy it remember that when the romans came they cover it then in that case you try to hide it as well but it's been destroyed so many times if it will be because someone occupied the city, if it's because of earthquakes or burned down a few times, actually at least four times, then in that case, it's totally, uh, it looks totally different. It's a particular, it's, it's a beautiful structure, but it's not as it used to be before. Um, soon I will show you a cave and we will try to describe how that tomb used to be look like. Lately, they renovated it and they opened the tomb and guess what? It was empty. The tomb is divided into two. The, the first part, you will see a candle there and a table. That's where the yam. Uh, that's the angels, the gods, took care that no one will steal the body of Jesus. The inner part is the tomb itself. Then let's uh, take a picture. That's the ten, ten, two. All right, we did it. And before they might kick me out, then let me take a video of it. See that, yeah, when you go out, you will see the candle light. How are you, And the inner part is the tomb. That cross already been blessed there. The other side is the Katilokon, the Greek Orthodox Katerval, and they are renovating now the tomb of it. One of the few places that you can see so many kind of priests, so many, uh, so many people from all over the world that no, are not here to see. No, can visit so many churches. They are here to pray in their church, and I like that idea. Before we will enter there, I want you to understand that there is a beautiful chapel here. Sadly, they are going to renovate it. And to change it because it's, I think it's too modern for them. I love it. This is where Mary Magdalene saw Jesus on Sunday. Look up here for it is. Did you see my Lord? You see, to the gardener. That was Jesus right there. That was Jesus. And then she was standing right here. And Jesus was standing right there. Then we are Mary Magdalene, and the cross will symbolize Jesus. It's not the end of the tour, there are so many other things to see because it's a very special day. Then I know that it's a long story, but I think after watching that video you will understand better 
uh, you will understand the complicity of the church. And this is the time to ask you to subscribe to my channel if you didn't do that before. And to send that link to everyone, every Christian that you know. You see that that part was already been excavated and soon they will decide how to build the floor again. I, mean, I don't know if it's going to be a new one or they're going to use the ancient one. Now let's enter to here. And the first impression of that room is that how dare people doing it? This is one of the most important places in the world, if not the most important place in the world for Christians. It doesn't look like it. It looks like it because they still argue. Who owns it? Is it owned by the Armenian? Is it owned by the uh, Church of Syria? Even the Copts be believe that it's part of them. But f let's keep that part and let's wish that they will fund uh, a solution for that. What is important for me is that you are now touching a floor, a, a wall from 4th century, from the time of the first church ever that was built by Queen Helen, the mother of Constantine. It was covered with marble. Then you can see all those small holes. But someone stole it. And you can see that here there are well, there's so many holes. It means that that place was totally different or, or more important than others. No, it's not a church. It's an altar that has been destroyed. Just waiting for that guy to leave that place. And I want to show you something. Oh, I cannot use it. I don't know why. I want to use the flashlight, but I cannot use it. I don't know why I cannot do that. But believe me, there are niches in it. It's a cave. It's a burial cave uh, from the time of Jesus. From the time of Jesus? Yes. From the time of Jesus. That was the garden of Joseph of Arimathea. Then in that cave that you saw in the mosaic wall at the beginning of that video, uh, there are at least six or seven niches. Then it could bury there six or seven people. What will happen to the eight one? There's no space for him. They will open the ancient tomb. They will take the bones out. And they will put it in a kind of a box by the name Osiri, and they will put the Osiri, the box with the bonds in it, in the storeroom. Why it's important for me? First of all, it actually shows you that that used to be a tomb from the time of Jesus. Secondly, um, if that is the tomb of Joseph over Amitya, and he gave Jesus his own tomb. There's another part of that sentence that I didn't tell you yet, because I'm just waiting for them to enter. He gave Jesus his own tomb. Wow, it's a big group. Yeah, very big group. <laughs> I can see it. <laughs> no, 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 it's okay. I will wait, I will wait, I will wait. And he gave Jesus his own tomb that no one used before. This is the dramatic part of it. No one used it before. Can you understand the meaning of it? It was a virgin tomb. The Bible is real. And I want you to understand that. I mean, as a tour guide, and as a guy who studied Christianity, in university and outside university, 
more than 20 years now, more than 20 years now, I can show you the Bible in front of you. And this is the meaning of visiting Jerusalem. This is the meaning of visiting the Holy Land. You don't need to do that. Christ is in every church. But if you, as a person, want to see the places, this is the real thing. Then I'm, uh, I'm getting a lot of um, arguments between people who say, you don't need to go there. It's a place full of idols. It's not, my dears. When you will come to here, you will understand the meaning of being here, the energy of that cross, the energy of yours, Carol, now when you, while you are watching it, is totally different than someone who never been here. And everyone who watched that video might feel it. And this is the reason I'm taking it. I took so many videos, hundreds of videos of the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. But every time, it's like the first time. ta -dam. Oh, the energy is so strong here. And slowly, slowly, the tourists are leaving the place. Then if you want to visit the church, the church is usually being closed at 7 p.m. Be sure to be there an hour before. And it's going to be less crowded. I didn't say that it's not going to be crowded, but less crowded. It's not the end of the tour, but please don't leave me. But remember, your mission is to send that video at least to 10 disciples. I can see the energy with you. That was the guy that was smiling to me. And I saw him a few times. I, I saw the energy and I had to, yeah, well, I'm from Israel. I need to say, to tell everything. And I saw the energy with him. That's where they started to renovate the floor of the church. And you can see part of it in front of you. If you ask, where are the toilets? Just there, go outside and turn right. Oh, wow. Nice wind. Nice breeze. It's the first two days that I can tell you that I'm not suffering of the heat. But don't worry. It's <laughs> It's going to be hot soon again. We are very close to another place. And sadly, we won't be able to see where they found the true cross today because they closed that part. As they are renovating now that part. I want to sneak in. Should I? Do that? No, I'm not. But I want to speak in. Then, this is one of the prisons of Christ. Now, if you will study about the history of that church, that place was mentioned by so many pilgrims from the 4th century and up. What's the prison doing here? It's not that the uh, Pontus Pilate uh, was here with him. He was waiting here at the end of the Via del Rosa. He was waiting with his cross on. And he was waiting for his cue. Cue, it sounds so horrible. Uh, for the crucifixion. That's where the, his legs were. can see exactly how it looks like. And this is the chapel, which owns by the Greek Orthodox. Bethy, I know that you love that icon of Jesus. Me too. I saw the energy in his eyes. Wow. Now there's so many people here. 
But from time to time, I can see someone who's a little bit, oh, it's different, special. That a dog cannot go in, let me tell you that in my, so I have at least 10 videos of the uh, invention of the um, cross, the St. Helen Chapel of the Armenian, that you will be able to see it. And next year, I will take another video of it. Suddenly, I cannot go in, I cannot go in. Consider the renovation of the dome. It's only 50 minutes. Um, let me take you to see another chapel, and then we're going to say goodbye. All right? Carol, I will send you that cross soon. Now, oh gosh, remember there was light. They are telling us we are going to close it soon. But it's so mystic. Looks like it's so dramatic like that with that light. Oh, beautiful, isn't it? I love that place. Let me show you one more chapel. And then we will say goodbye in front of you. You can see it. Oops, I almost fell. It's happened to me a lot. In front of you, you can see an Armenian monk. There are less and less tourists. This is the best time to be here around 6 o'clock. <coughs> Remember, we just left the Golgotha from there, Greek Orthodox part. And I cannot enter to see what's happening there. Although you know that I wish to see everything. Not a lot to see. But here you can see part of the Golgotha. This is the lower part of it. We've been above it. Let's enter to that chapel. This is Adam Chapel. And remember that I said that the Greek Orthodox, they do have um, part of a relic of the true cross. Then this is the door to enter through it. But now the tour guide is talking and I don't want to disturb him. Then I will wait outside and then I will enter there to tell you that this is part of the Golgotha as well. And another angle of it, but you will see there a creek. Remember that Jesus was crucified at 12. He died around 3 o'clock. And then, um, actually what's happened, it's, it was dark and earthquake. And you can see the creek. According to the Bible, so many dead people resurrected. According to the Greek Orthodox who owns that place, one of them was Adam. Adam and Eve. And before you will ask me, how can it be? Because that word been destroyed. Um, then according to them, um, God or bury him here after the flood. Then this is Adam Chapel. And let me bless your cross, Carol. I, I have so many things to talk about you, to say about you, but I cannot. It doesn't allow me to do that. Then I'm thinking about it. I'm sure that you can feel it as well. Another important thing is that here, if you will enter, if it will be open, ask the, the priest. If you can enter, then go in and to the left. There's a chapel there and you will see the small cross in a nice icon um, of the true cross. Now, that area is the tomb of at least seven kings of, uh, uh, of the Crusaders. The Godfrey, uh, Baldwin, the first, second, third, and fourth are buried at tomb. But let's say it in a nice way. The Crusaders and the Greek Orthodox were good friends. 
when the crusaders entered the city they killed most of the jews who've been here and most of the greek orthodox have been there then in that case when they decided to build that part they covered it and let's go outside people are still entering the church And I'm looking for one person because I want to know exactly at what time they're going to close the church tonight. And I want to show you the ceremony of it because the last time that I took that ceremony was many, 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 many years ago. Why it's important? Many because I'm going to be here until 2 a.m. It's a special day for the Jews. Tomorrow it's the Rosh Hashanah New Year, the Jewish New Year. And I want to be here. I want to take a video for you then I don't know how long it's gonna take and I know that I will have to wait in the city for all night because I didn't arrive with a car and I, I will have to wait for the first train at 5 30 a.m. Carol and everyone who watched that video thank you very much it was a glimpse tour of only one hour uh, but there are more to see, more to talk about. But that's for the next video. Or you can actually write in my YouTube channel, Church of the Holy Sepulchre. And I'm sure that you will see videos from 20 years ago until now. Thank you very much for being with me. See you. Bye-bye.